Hello children, let us start a new chapter, Laws of Motion. First, we will understand what is motion. In kinematics, we have seen that an object is said to be at rest if its position does not change as the time passes. Here, we will say just opposite. An object is said to be in motion if its position changes as the time passes. We will include one more term, orientation. This is related to rotation. Orientation means angles made by any linear dimension of the given object with coordinate axes. So the modified definition will be an object is said to be in motion if its position or orientation or both change as the time passes. Types of motion. There are two types of motion, translational motion and rotational motion. When an object changes its position without changing its orientation, its motion is called as pure translational motion. For example, a car moving on a straight road. When an object changes its orientation without changing its position, its motion is called as pure rotational motion. For example, a rotating ceiling fan. An example of both translational as well as rotational motion can be tires of a moving car. Translational motion can be further subdivided into two categories, rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. We have already read two chapters in kinematics. Motion in a straight line is related to rectilinear motion and motion in a plane is related to curvilinear motion. Motion in an object is caused by an external force or forces. So we need to understand force first. Force is an interaction between two objects as the action of one on the other in the form of push or pull. It tries to bring out change in motion of both the objects. Force on both the objects is action reaction pair. Any one can be called as action and the other one reaction. For example, when you try to push a table, table applies equal and opposite force on your hands to resist any change in its position. Force is a vector quantity. It has magnitude as well as direction. To predict how a force affects the motion of an object, we need to know magnitude, direction and point of application of force. Consider this is an object. A force F is applied at point P. So P is point of application of force. Direction and point of application of force decide line of action of force. So QR is line of action of force. Now point number one, magnitude and direction decide the translational motion of the object. Point number two, magnitude and line of action of force decide the rotational motion of the object. So you can sense that this object will have translational motion as well as rotational motion. Rotational motion because line of action of force is not passing through center of mass. We will talk more about rotational motion in respective chapter. Force is represented by capital F. Its unit is Newton. 1 Newton is equal to 1 kg meter per second square. Types of forces. There are two types of forces, contact forces and field forces. When one object applies the force on other, when both of them are in direct contact, this type of force is known as contact force. For example, normal reaction, tension in a string and friction force. When one object applies the force on other without being in direct contact with each other, this type of force is known as field force. For example, gravitational force, electrostatic force and magnetic force. In this chapter, we will consider only gravitational force as every object experiences gravitational pull towards earth and that is considered as its weight. In next video, we will talk about Newton's laws of motion and concept of free body diagram. If you have a question, you can ask me on my Discord server. If you have not subscribed my channel yet, please do so.